go. All right. We'll move this up here. So welcome everybody. Um, I am so super excited for tonight. Um, I have a few announcements before we get into the, the main event, if you will. Um, I'm hoping Ashlyn shares a little bit with us about her experience at New Leader Conference because she went this past weekend as a total stalker and was like following her every move, waiting for every single Instagram post or Facebook post to see what they were doing because last year it was just such a great event for myself. So I was excited to see her and Melanie and a bunch of other folks there. So it was fun. Okay, real quick, I'll just burn through these so um, we can get to what we all are here to learn about. Um, but I wanna just take a minute and um, Celebrate the wins, we're gonna do recognition, a few updates, just a reminder about events, then we'll get into our training. Does anyone, um, I wanna take just a couple minutes to like celebrate any wins that you guys have had over the past couple weeks since the last time we chatted. So anybody feeling like a win personally or in your business or something that you wanna share super fast? You would have to unmute yourself. I uh, finally had a coach that's starting boat, uh, coach basics without telling me that she's, I mean, she's really doing it. And so that's exciting. Yay! Um, yay, yay, yay. And then another one that did touch base to say, I'm not going to lie. I haven't touched it, but she's going to start working on that this week and she's reserved time to do it. So that's a win. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. It's always fun when people start, when you start finding people to duplicate you. Yeah. Good job. Anybody else? guys are quiet. <laughs> Nothing? February was just boring. Hmm. Okay, I swear tonight I'm going to get to SC10 and that's just all there is to it. So that's going to be a win. All right, I'm thinking positive. <laughs> I love it. Well, that's let's go to I know you can do it. If there's anyone who can, Delise, I know you can for sure. <laughs> Let's hope on that, all right? Um, all right, well, let's jump into some recognition. I just want to welcome a few new coaches that have been added to our team over the past couple weeks, Lindy, Autumn, and Dennis. We've got Marie, Christine, Mark, and Sadie, and Joy, which I love your name, and Brandon. I just saw Brandon hop on the call, so we're so thankful that you guys um, took this next step and are saying yes to your best life. Uh, Heather, I just want to do a quick congratulations to Heather Yaw, who is a new Emerald coach. Um, for those of you who are brand new coaches and Emerald, um, Emerald coach is basically your first promotion in this business. It's when you sponsor two coaches into your organization and Beachbody basically, uh, recognizes you as someone who has officially open for business and you start to earn team cycle bonus. So that's super exciting. And we dive in all of this stuff in our Coach Academy training. So if, you, if all that sounds foreign to you, just jump into the next one and we will do a deep dive on all of that stuff. I um, also wanna say congratulations to Trisha McWilliams, who is our rock star of the week. Way to go, sister. Um, just a real refresher here. Um, the Shakeology Home Direct Order is going to be two points beginning in March. That's a huge win for all of us. So I think we're going to have to change it to like Success Club 6. Like there's no Success Club 5 mathematically anymore. So it's just either Success Club, you know, with three people or Success Club with five people, I guess. I don't know. We'll have to figure out how to <laughs> reword that. Um, all access challenge pack is going to continue at the same price point. So that's good news. But after um, February um, from March forward, it will go to two success club points instead of the three that was on special promotion for January and February. Real quick. I want to make sure everyone knows about the new PMP. Um, basically this was to get us in alignment with industry standard. And so, um, Basically, we were the most liberal of all network marketing organizations at allowing people to participate in other network marketing businesses. And um, so this was just kind of like a course correction to kind of bring us in alignment with other network uh, marketing companies. 
Um, you still can be a preferred customer if you are, like let's say you have a Mary Kay discount or something like that. You can still do that as long as you're not pulling in um, an income from that other opportunity, you're okay. But the moment that somebody is, is drawing any income from that, then that's a problem they're gonna have to choose. And I think this is really a great thing for our businesses because it's gonna help us focus on identifying our ideal customer, which Ashlyn's gonna talk about tonight, and helping them go from coach to advocate to, or sorry, from customer to advocate to coach, which is gonna give us stronger businesses. So ultimately, you guys, this is a really um, business strengthening move, and I'm really glad that, that Beachbody did it. Uh, just want to put on your radar that uh, international expansion is on the horizon. We don't know where yet. I'm hoping, hoping, hoping they make an announcement in Punta Cana next month. But here are a few things you can do now just to be ready. Make a list of people you know. Think about connectors who might um, know people internationally. Use this as a reason to touch back with people that you previously invited to join your team. You can circle back with them and let them know that we're getting ready to expand internationally and you thought that you might be a great fit for this phase of your business. So that might be a great follow-up for you. Um, you, you really want to rock your business now. <laughs> this is network marketing. So you really want to like give it all you have now so that when we do expand internationally, you never know who's going to be on your team that might be that connector into that new, new territory. <laughs> So make sure that you're seizing this front end opportunity um, it, <coughs> and then get to events like events are going to be the thing that um, that we um, will be using and leveraging um, as an organization to be in the know about all the latest breaking news. Don't rely on your sponsor coach to spoon feed you all of the new exciting stuff. Treat it like the multi-million dollar business, you know, that it can be, and um, go ahead and get to the events and own it for yourself. Speaking of events, we've got the gathering coming up. Um, this is going to be super fun, you guys, and it's an opportunity for our whole team to get together with the Bigger Rockstar team in Plano. We're going to just have a weekend of team development, of a little training. We're going to work out together. We're going to play together. It's going to just be fun. And so if you can break away just for the weekend and hang out with us, please do so. We have um, room blocks uh, set aside for you guys to reserve a room. Um, and it's going to whoops, coincide with our Super Sunday, which um, Joel Freeman is going to be there, as well as Jesse Reagan. That's going to be a huge training. <laughs> you guys don't miss it. Um, and I love Joel, so I'm sure he's going to make us all feel like we're about to die in our workout. That's okay. Um, Coach <laughs> Summit, I know it seems super early, but get this on your radar. Um, right now, um, the ticket cost is $195. Um, and we sandwich people into hotel rooms and make it work. Um, but if you are a success starter, meaning you've earned success club for the first three months as a coach, you get a free ticket. So it's worth showing that consistency at the get go. Um, last day to start your new rank qualification for summit recognition is May 11. So reverse engineer what you need to do to get to the goal. Um, I believe one stars and above are the ones who get to like walk this stage in recognition. <laughs> so it's definitely worth a little extra hustle to get that because it's super, super fun. Okay, main event. I'm so excited. Ashlyn Mitchell, she is just like a national treasure. I don't even think she realizes how <laughs> much she means to me. But she's the founder of Mama Bear Fitness. She is a two-star diamond coach, just came back from the new leader conference. Um, she champions um, children and, and merit, like strong marriages. She's got a great story of overcoming child abuse within her, uh, her own family as well as uh, porn addiction. And so like seriously, her and Kobe are changing like so many lives, not even through, not just through Beachbody, but like through um, their ministry really. And so I am so super proud 
of them using their story for good. And um, she has scoliosis and a few spine, which you would never believe because she does the most beautiful yoga poses. <laughs> so, <laughs> but like she shares all that on Instagram. She shares her story so openly. And um, honestly, she is just an amazing leader, a super rock star, and she has mastered Instagram like none other. And so I'm super excited for her to give us her insider tips on finding your ideal customer and some Instagram tips along the way. Are you on, Ashlyn? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Hang on. I'm going to stop sharing. Okay. Are you going to talk to us or do you have slides? Okay. I have slides, yes. Okay, let me unshare. Hold on one second. Stop sharing. All right, sister, you should be able to screen share now, can you? Let's see. Yes. Down at the bottom? Where did it go? Is it down at the bottom? Yeah, sorry. I'm not seeing it on here, so hang on. I'm trying to find it. Share screen. Let me just seeing my desktop. Okay, there it is. Okay, cool. Okie dokie. So, um, thank you for the intro. You're hilarious. But. <laughs> All right, <laughs> we are going to start this, and let me see if I can minimize this. All right, so I'm going to tell you um, quickly who I am. I have these two little girls. Um, they're eight and six years old. We've been married for 17 years. And um, we share our crazy workouts usually each morning. And um, it's just crazy. Um, I have this fused spine and have had a fused spine for 26 years. And so I modify every single day and I've had great results with that. And I graduated in interior design. So I'm a retired kitchen designer. I did that for eight years. So um, not what I do now. Uh, I started into fitness a little bit of what Joy said to just cope with my kids' abuse from a family member and um, like found out and within two weeks I had a gym membership and was like, I'm not going to be a cliche. I'm going to just go and I'm going to work out and I would cry and, you know, be mad and just use fitness for what it, the good that it could bring. And I still ate like Swedish fish and one vegetable every week, but... <laughs> Um, it worked for me and it gave me what I needed at the time. Um, my husband worked at Beachbody Corporate for the sales team, so he was a mentor. And um, so I actually had Shakeology for free for three years and refused to drink it. I was like, not gonna drink that Kool Aid, it's just some other MLM, not interested. Um, but I did do their programs at the gym. And um, after watching my own coach and all these other coaches, um, do their thing on Facebook. I thought, well, why can't I do that? I already work out. I don't eat healthy, but I can definitely kind of share what I'm doing. And so I joined after watching for three years and that meant my husband left Beachbody corporate so that I could be a coach. And that was, um, I don't even know when I signed up May of 2014, I think. Um, anyways, so we share our story. Um, the, my daughter's story, and then our story of addiction recovery and betrayal over on another account, Ashlyn and Kobe. And so that's, um, I'm three star qualifying right now, two star coach, success club, 10 legend for 30 months in a row. And I just got back from the national leader conference, which joy mentioned is it like, it was awesome. And I remember her telling me that, but I didn't quite grasp it until I was there. And I heard all the, um, corporate people saying like, this really is my favorite event and I thought wow I have always heard that leadership was the most fun because it's just like sit back and relax but the difference is with the um, national leader conference or the new leader conference is that they're they're giving you so much good information but also rewarding you a lot and so you're you get to kind of have both and it's a lot of fun it's very intimate uh, like the if you've ever done a live workout with Beachbody um, <laughs> It can be crowded and everyone wants to be front and center, but we had the opportunity to do that because there was like 200 of us. So it was a lot of fun and um, I would definitely work towards that. If, if you have plans and goals for this year, I hope that's one of them. All right, so we are gonna start on how do you start? Cause I know some of you probably use Facebook and, um, 
you usually do what your coach, how you, however you found your coach is how you usually take off and start your own business, right? And so a lot of my coaches, 100% of my co coaches start on Instagram because that's where they found me. And so I just like to tell people, start where you're at. So if you've never been active on Instagram, it's pretty overwhelming to start there. But if you have a Facebook, then do that. So this is for like, you want the next step or you're just getting started. Now, this is a big deal to understand. I thought Instagram was a filter before I started coaching. I did not understand what it was. And um, so I didn't grow this huge following like with all this knowledge. It was completely and still is a learning process for me. And so I'm continually learning um, new information. And I try to share that as often as I can with not only my team, but other, other teams as well. So um, the first thing that I'm sure Joy has told you before is to figure out what sets you apart from every other coach. So they talk about having five pillars that set you apart. Um, most of us are going to say our family um, and then like fitness and nutrition. Okay, so that doesn't set you apart from anyone. That's just human. And so you really have to come up with what else is there. For me, I was like, I'm a truth teller. I am, I'm okay being vulnerable and um, real. I can, I'm happy to share like the dirty laundry on my floor because I, I know that that helps people feel trust and it, it helps them see that they, I'm not perfect. Uh, there's too much of that on social media in my opinion. So I also know, um, I knew, okay, I love cinnamon rolls and I don't eat them every month or even, you know, I don't but I want them every month. And so <laughs> part of my profile, that's part of who I am. I get tagged in so many um, cinnamon roll things because that's what I talk about. I choose to eat healthy and I become very disciplined with the way I eat, but that doesn't mean I don't want to eat a cinnamon roll. So that is one of my pillars is the fact that I can enjoy a treat and that I want those treats and that it's okay. Because like Autumn says, those cravings never really go away. Um, and then my scoliosis, that sets me apart. Um, a fuse back sets me apart. And um, I like to share a lot of gluten-free recipes because my daughter has celiac. So those are a few of the things that set me apart. So for you, it's figuring out what those things are. Um, and then it's a lot, a lot of these things are the same as Facebook. So if you're used to that or if you're brand new to all of this, um, same, same type of thing, okay, is be consistent. So I like to have a theme, set up a posting rotation so that um, you'll see in mine, it may not um, be uh, a theme of the day like my cute coach Lauren does. I love that and I'm implementing that right now. But mine is like I share an uplifting quote, sometimes funny, um, every single morning. And that not only keeps me accountable, like my fitness keeps me accountable when I share it, to my personal development. So when I find something that when I'm listening, I will pause the book that I'm listening to or the podcast and I will hurry and make a quote out of it or write it down in my notes or something so that I have it so that I can use and share. So that has helped me and absolutely changed my business. Um, it's given me people who are more positive and um, want that uplifting thought every morning and they look forward to it. So it started out as this kind of weird thing that I thought maybe I'll just implement this and it's totally changed things. Um, and then I share a workout video. I don't do how-to videos. That doesn't mean you shouldn't. It just doesn't work for my crowd. Uh, my crowd wants to see my crazy workout in the morning with my kids running around. And so that's what I share. And so it's figuring out what that is for you. Um, and then I share, like you can see right there, some recipes. I share a selfie every once in a while so they can see what I look like because my workouts are far away. You can't see my face. Um, the, another important thing is to know when people look on Instagram, it's so fast. Like if you watch somebody on Instagram, they're like just scrolling. Like it's just, it's basically if, if you look at it like a greeting card. So you have to have a really good picture and then you have to have a quick content. And I don't know, but I make sure that those first two lines are, are grabbing them so that they want to click read more. And um, so if they're gonna click on my name and see my profile, I want them to see a close up of my face. Uh, it doesn't have to be professional. This is um, one I just got professionally done. 
but I had one that I got my nice DSLR camera and I went in my backyard and like after church one day. So I was dressed up. So uh, it just something that it's you so they can see you. And then I give them a little idea of what they're going to expect from me. Um, and then <laughs> I have uh, a link to my um, website as well. And then up here you can see it says contact. That means that I have uh, switched my account so it is no longer personal, but it is a business account. I've linked it to my Facebook like page. So now I have insights on everything that I post, including Instagram stories. So I can see when people left my Instagram story. Um, I can see how many people saw my post, how many people liked it, how many commented, um, how many people saved it. Because some people have been, that's a new feature. You can save posts. And so it's always really interesting. And it will give you an idea of um, what, type you're, what type of followers you have, where they're looking, and what type of thing that they're looking for. So hopefully, um, if you start following that, um, you will start to see, okay, I need to be posting more food pictures because my followers, those are my most popular posts. That's what I need more of. Um, it's, those things are what it's going to give you um, a better following. Um, the next thing is to write your posts like you're talking to your best friend. So be you, be real. So sometimes I actually will like talk my post like to Siri just so that it sounds more like me because sometimes when I type it out, it sounds too rigid and I just need it to sound like me. And so if you need to, I mean, sometimes my coaches will call or they'll text me and they'll say, this is what I'm feeling. I'm like, well, that's your post. Like if you don't know what to post, that's what you should post because you said it so casual and warm and that's exactly what you want. You want people to, to trust you with your words. Um, if your picture does not add value, do not post it. Um, so it needs to relate in some way to why you were a coach, um, your five pillars about being healthier, about, about being happier, about the job opportunity, that type of thing. So um, remember, everyone thinks their kids are cute. And so if you're only posting pictures of your kids or your dogs or your pets or whatever, it's, it's almost like if you see a picture of my kids in my Instagram, guess who's going to be right there with them? Me or Kobe. Because I, those are like the... Um, stars of my show and <laughs> pretend it's a re reality show and these are the cast members but if I post them just that if someone is scrolling and they're new to my feed they're not going to know who my kids are and they're going to go why do I have someone's kids in my feed and unfollow me and so I always try to make sure that I'm a part of that photo because I am branded as mama bear fitness so that's something for you to think about um, let's see stories function. If you don't know what IG stories is, it's a really great new function that works like Snapchat. And if you are not using it, you want to be using it. It's a really great way for you to not clog up your feed with, um, just stuff. You know, you want to keep your feed pretty consistent, uh, but it gives you an opportunity to behind the scenes stuff like, um, right before your workout, even during your workout. Uh, it's a great little like 15 second snapshot. Um, you can do a still picture, you can do a video, you can do a whole series of you talking and sharing a story, it doesn't matter. Those all disappear within 24 hours. But it's a, it's a really cool thing and I feel like that's been a way for people to see me more and get to know me behind the scenes. Uh, they also have Instagram Live, which that disappears the moment you push end. So it can be a good way to practice because you might only get four followers. Uh, the scary part of it is people can ask anything they want because those comments disappear. And so like a, one of my coaches the other day uh, in, the down, in my downline said, I got on live like you suggested and somebody was, some guy got on and said he wanted to marry me and it was throwing me off. And um, so you might get stuff like that and that's okay. You just roll with it uh, because the minute you push end, it's gone. Okay. So, um, if you, once you've figured out who, who you are, you all consistently post, it's repeating that over and over and over. So that's going to brand you. Um, and so that I like to say it, like if I walked out of the room and you know, Lucy here says, Hey, you should follow this girl, Mama Bear Fitness, because she talks or she shares healthy recipes. She um, talks about intermittent fasting or she has a fuse back. 
Like, what are the things that they're going to say about you if you left the room? And so for me, it's fitness, food, and family. Um, it's so many other little things, but uh, figure out what that is for you and share it in a different way each week. It has to be repeated over and over and over. Um, I can't tell you how often I have shared. Um, we have videos that share our story of recovery and of my story. And people have followed me for over a year and still they'll be like, I just read it. Like, oh, I just saw your videos after a year. And that's me being pretty consistent at posting. So I'm not kidding when I say you have to repeat and share over and over. Um, hashtags, it's a huge part of Instagram. You need them. They're annoying and they're weird. I know. But you have to research them. Don't just use popular ones. Like I know you can go um, on the internet and just say like best hashtags for fitness. You don't want those. You want uh, like 800,000 or less in a hashtag. Um, grouping, I guess, because if you go into a hashtag and say like fit mom and there's a, a million people, you're not going to stand out and you're going to just become part of the feed that no one's going to scroll down. You ideally want to be at the top of that feed. And so it's figuring out what those hashtags are that kind of keep you up that direction. And so it's maybe going a little off thinking outside the box. Uh, for me, I don't know if you guys can probably not see this. I can't see what's going on here. I can only see my screen. But I, in my notes section of my phone, have I have copy and pasted all of my um, different hashtags. So I have one for like a quote, one for food, one for fitness, one for um, what's the other one. Yeah, just those those three right now. And then I just will. You can use 30 at a time. So I'll do usually three or four in the actual post, and then I'll follow it with a comment with those. You see those little dots? You have to do that in your notes section. You can't do that in Instagram. They don't let you do hard returns. But I do five little periods, and then I just hashtag the crap out of it. And you can um, like copy and paste and then adjust and edit if needed. So you can see in this Nashville one, I, start, I, I researched and I found some Nashville um, hashtags that worked that were not their biggest ones, but that would get me noticed. Uh, and so I will use like the workout gear that I use, or if I bought something at Target, it's Target Life or Costco Life or whatever that is. Um, my food ones always have the same ones. And then I will add a couple that maybe are more relative, like an egg waffle or whatever that is. So do your homework because you don't want to be attracting a beach body coaches or stuff like that. Um, so part of what I was talking about before is finding your most popular posts. And I didn't actually screenshot this. I should have, have darn it. But if you go into um, your profile on your Instagram, there's a little graph up by your settings and that's where you can follow, find all of your insights. It's going to tell you when people clicked on your um, profile, uh, if they, let's see, if they clicked on your website link and if they went to click on your email. So those are really important for me because when I start to notice, like um, a day ago, mine said my engagement had gone down for website clicks because I hadn't asked people to go and read my story. So guess what I did yesterday? <laughs> I shared my story and it was really easy for me because I was wearing something that went with my story. And, um, now my engagement is up 106 from website clicks instead of down. So it's, it's a good reminder for me to make sure I'm doing what they want and what they need to get to know me and also the posts they want. So um, what's worked for me as far as um, I, these what I ate posts, guys, they, I hate doing them. I don't like take, being the weirdo that takes pictures of their food, but people want to know that I'm normal and that I eat normal foods. And I really do. I don't make fancy foods. I make simple, simple foods. So um, I, those are my most popular giveaways, of course, are super popular. And they're really easy to do on Instagram compared to Facebook. Um, and then my food recipes. So figure out what works for you. Okay, so... Um, this is the same stuff with Facebook. Use the old content, and that's really easy to find now that you can say, these are my most popular posts. Um, engaging posts, like which one should I wear, A or B? Um, those ones are always going to help your engagement go up. 
and um, I already shared that consistency is key. You can create your own hashtags, which has been a lifesaver for me. When people say, hey, I'm looking for this recipe, can you share it? I'll say, no, actually, you can find it at hashtag mama bear recipes. Oh, if people don't, I want to join your challenge, but I'm not sure. I, you know, I don't have the same body type as you. Oh, we'll go to hashtag mama bear results and you'll see there's tons of different body types. Like this can work for so many people. Um, so figure out what that is for you and use it every time you use that kind of post. Um, let's see. Oh, this is a, a image of a, my quotes that I post. So I created like a background, which I know Joy's really good at. So you guys probably are too, <laughs> but I basically made a template and then I just add the text to it. I use the same font, um, same colors and everything to get that same look every single day. And I use the same filters as well on my pictures. Okay, so how do you um, attract the right person? Because if you're doing all those things and you're like frustrated because your engagement is not growing, you're not gaining followers, um, the great thing is Instagram is a lot easier, I believe, at finding people and it's free. <laughs> you don't have to pay anything. So that's why um, I've never paid for that kind of stuff. And so I feel um, grateful for that. Um, not everyone's gonna like you, just like on Facebook, and that's okay, because you don't want to attract those people who are negative or mean. Um, you wanna repel them. And so if my story repels someone, I'm like, cool, that's, that, like, that's their own stuff, and it's not me. Um, ask your followers what you want. And so this is something fun that you can do, uh, whether it's in a question form. I actually did, uh, um, in my first year, I created like a Google Doc questionnaire where I was very specific, like what's your favorite store to shop at? Um, if you, like what kind of music do you listen to? What kind of books do you read? What's your favorite TV show? Where do you live? Um, any of those questions, like figure out what it is. What kind of workouts do they like? And so that you kind of know, like, okay, I'm getting the same type of person or the same age bracket or the same part of the country. Like, what is it that's attracting them? And then I need more of them. So I'm going to figure out and do, okay, I'm going to, when I go to Target, guess what I'm going to post about? Going to Target and I'm going to geotag it that I was there and I'm going to find the Target um, hashtags that make it so that it works. Now, are you just it's going to be like selfie I'm a target no you find a way to share and give like whatever that is for you um, my cute Tiffany she does yoga at target so she'll do yoga poses at target so very clever um, okay so you're gonna figure out your ideal customer and coach by speaking to them get specific so um, where do they shop online or in person um, what apps are they using what foods do they love what shows are they watching music? Do they have kids? Are they married? Do they go to work full-time, part-time? Do they go to church? Um, reading, hiking, do they love Disneyland? These like big ones are um, really important, especially on Instagram, because if I write um, Disneyland 2017 trip and hashtag that, guess what? If somebody else does that, they're gonna be looking at the pictures in that hashtag and mine might stand out to them. So it's a really important thing to figure out um, what your followers like and to use it in a way that benefits you and links you together. Because the best thing you can do is find like-minded people. And um, you'll start to, for me, I found, I attract the same names. It's the weirdest thing. So I have a lot of Laurens and a lot of Rachels. And so uh, who knows what I'm doing to get those things. But um, they're, they are like attracting like. Uh, another thing that you can do is on your Instagram stories once a month, just saying, Hey, what do you guys want more of? Tell me, do you want more recipes? Do you want that sort of thing? And, or just saying, where do you guys, I need a new washer and dryer. Where should I go? I need a new dress. And the engagement goes crazy because everyone has an opinion. So that's how you're going to find who's, who's watching and um, what they're interested in. Okay, so the bonus stuff of this is you can, to build your engagement, is hosting giveaways. So um, if you have the opportunity to, you already have maybe a thousand followers, you can reach out to brands, and I'm happy to share um, with Joy and all of you how I do that uh, by reaching out to brands and just saying, hey, this is who I am, and this is my following and my engagement, 
And um, I, this is the collab I'm looking to do, like a sponsored post or a giveaway. And I'd really like to showcase your brand. I've done this since um, I got a thousand followers and I chose to work with brands that I was already using. So it wasn't a stretch for me to say, I really like this brand. It's like, I already use them and I already love them. So it's there. Um, P companies are more willing to work with influencers, which is what you would technically call me because it's a lot cheaper for them to pay me or to send me product than it is for them to run an ad on Facebook or to run a, an ad on Google dot com or whatever so um, if you if you use that stuff you're more likely to do that but that that's a great way to gain followers because you have to require them to um, follow you follow the company and then tag um, a friend so it's always a fun thing um, all right if you okay this is a new one and it's a fun one so um, especially if you guys are new to Instagram and you're like hey well all of our all of us have really low engagement no one's liking or commenting we started uh, just a few weeks ago in Instagram has private messages. They call them direct messages or DM. And it's the little like uh, paper airplane here in the corner. And so if I click on that, I have a group that is, let me see, it's like what, 15 of us coaches, 10 or 15 of us in my team who we are all, all working coaches and um, we've gotten in there and the rule of this comment pod is what we call it is that when you post you um, share in the group like three emojis in a row and say that's it like I posted and that tells me like okay Lauren just posted so I, if I click on her name I can go like and I can go comment on her post and the sooner you do it the more it helps that engagement of that post go up and so um, basically it gets seen more by your followers because they've Facebook brought Instagram. So the algorithms are all messed up. So, um, that's going to help you. And, um, but you have to do three words or more for it to count. So not three emojis, like three words, like you're doing great or whatever that is. But what it's done is it's created relationships between our team as we see and read each other's posts. And it's also helped boost everyone's engagement and um, also a place for you to ask questions and get them answered. So I've really enjoyed it and it helps me stay more engaged with my own coaches and um, for all of that reason. So that's a great thing to do. Um, and then I know everyone gets concerned with like, I don't have enough likes or followers or I don't have a hundred thousand people following me. Well, I don't either. I have um, barely 14,000, which sounds like Oh my gosh, I, I can't even believe I have 14,000 people following me, but it's really not that many. Like so many people have more than me. However, the best part of that is that I have really high engagement, which means that those, you know, not all 14,000 people are seeing my posts or even commenting, but the ones that are um, engaged are engaged. So that means they're liking and they're commenting or they're um, saving it or sharing it or reposting. And so you want um, your engagement to be more important than your actual followers. So if you're getting a lot of spam people following you, like fake names or people that are following like 5,000 people, I would go ahead and block them because that's actually gonna hurt your engagement. So although it sounds good to have like, well, I have like a thousand followers. If a brand were to look at you and say, um, actually you're, you have a thousand followers, but you're following 5,000 people, or you only have two likes on your post, like it's not a very engaged um, page. And so you really wanna focus on that engagement. That comment pod will help with that, okay? 10% um, of your following should be engaged in your post, meaning liking or commenting them. All right, so your homework is you need to create your ideal follower. So um, if you've done Jesse Regan's training, it's literally like I had a whole page of just all the brands that I shop at, all the, just, everything it's like a brain dump of who basically you are and who you want to hang out with that's really what it is and um so that's what that is um, update your profile picture and your bio if you need to that's a close-up picture and you know those five pillars of who you are if you're funny make sure you're funny in it if you're boring don't be boring in it but um do something else um, create a posting rotation of who you are and what your ideal follower is interested in and then figure out the ways that you can incorporate 
and ask every three to five posts, um, like ask to go to a recipe on my blog or watch my YouTube or join my next challenge or become a coach. Those are your asking co um, ones. Um, invest in better apps. So if you're not using apps that you like or you're feeling frustrated with the ones you have, um, I use Rana Designs every single day. I have the whole pack. It's three different apps. Um, that's really worked well for me, um, but I work from my phone most of the day. I'm not on my computer most of the day. So it's, it's really a preference. Um, PicTap Go is um, a great one to brighten your photos. iMovie is how I edit all of my uh, workout videos. I speed them up. I have a whole video on that. And then I edit them. Um, and then video filters brightens my photos because I live, I work out in a dark basement. Um, invest in something to take your food photos. So whether it's a, like go buy a big tile for three bucks at Lowe's or um, poster board, foam core at the dollar store, uh, like a white background, that's gonna, I, for two years, had foam core, white foam core sitting by uh, my back door that I would plop down so that it had natural light, and I would just set my picture, or my food on it, and hurry and grab a picture. Uh, because you, it's, I mean, it's like a waste of time if you're just gonna post like a blurry, yellowy picture of food, because it's not, like appetizing, right? So um, I actually got a box, it's called Shop Box, and um, I can give you guys a link to it if you guys really want it, but it's um, allowed me, if you, um, I'll post a post tonight on it, about it, but it's what I do for my what I ate post, because I eat all day long and the light changes throughout the day in my home, so this box is like continually the same light. So it's um, been great for me. Um, and then I want you to research your hashtags and start using them in every single post. So if you post and don't use hashtags, you kind of wasted a post. So you need to use hashtags. And that's it. Uh oh, you're you're muted. No, I'm muted now. My head is like, whoa, that was amazing, and so much. I know I'm not doing a good job. Um, like I'm, I think I'm outsourcing some of this stuff that I need to be researching for myself. And so I'm totally convicted to do some things myself. Question, um, so when people like comment and engage in your Instagram posts, are you like messaging every single person and trying to develop, like how do you transition from engagement to challenger? Yeah. Awesome. So, um, I don't do it as much anymore. I'm not as great as it at it because the engagement is up to I can't I miss a lot of things basically. Um, but when I first started, it was I definitely make sure I try I do my best not to um, blurt out Beachbody and Shakeology like crazy because I learned the hard way that everyone just goes and buys it and then they tell me, "Okay, I'm ready. Yeah, let's join your group." And I'm like. Uh, so I, I send them a direct message. If they say, what workout are you using? You know, if I say I'm doing an MMA workout, I just send them a direct message and say, Hey, I sent you a DM so that they know to go look. And I'll just say, Hey, I'm doing this program. It's, it's awesome. It's only 30 minutes. And it's blah, 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 blah. And I help other people get started with them and finish them and keep going. And so it's like a little teeny blurb, um, that you can send it in direct message. And, um, I, if you get a new follower that, that looks legit, like it's not some bot or weird company, definitely reach out to them, send them a direct message and say, hey, I, you know, thanks for following along with my journey here. What kept you here? Um, are you looking for help with recipes or um, fitness? Like, tell me where you're at. And so it's not like a sales pitch. It's really just, thanks for following me. Tell me why you're here. And you guys probably already do that with your Facebook like page. Um, but I like to keep it really short and you can keep that in like your notes section. Um, I know my coach, Rachel, she has like three different ones. She said like a funny one, if they look like they're funny, um, or like a more serious one. So it depends on what you see in their profile. If you, if they're not private, that's another big thing. Make sure that your Instagram is not private. It has to be public. <laughs> yeah. Otherwise no one can see what you're doing. Um, okay. Yes. Questions. You guys have a really great opportunity here to ask questions specifically about Instagram. I am not an expert in this. <laughs> Yet. 
How many of you are using Instagram daily? Oh, daily now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the thing that impresses me most about what Ashlyn has done is not only like her, like I have brand envy over what Ashlyn does in Instagram for sure, but um, she's been able to like do this without paying any ad dollars. And to me, that's really remarkable. Like she has created such a successful business just out of um, adding value and then engaging with the people who are engaging in her posts. So it kind of blows wide open the myth that like you have to invest a ton of money in social media. It's not really true. You just have to be intentional with what you're putting out there probably. Yeah. For sure. Ashley, um, question. What was I going to say? Oh, go ahead. Well, okay, so I'm, I have not researched the whole hashtag Instagram thing because I don't use Instagram often enough, but I know that everybody uses it on Facebook too. So this is probably the most basic question and you guys are going to laugh, but I'm just going to ask anyway. So I don't understand, you don't have to ask, give me an answer, but I'm not following what the heck the hashtag is for. Like it links you up okay. with other popular hashtags, right? Yeah, it's a good question. And honestly, I didn't understand it either. Um, I used to just use it like for funny things like right. today sucked or whatever. Right. <laughs> like, well, that doesn't really do anything. So um, right. you have to be careful with your hashtags because if you do the research and honestly, it's like going to take you a half hour to do the research. Right. Okay. It doesn't even take that long. Um, you'll find that some are inappropriate. Like, oh, these are pictures of girls' butts. Like, no, oh, nice. I don't want to talk about squatting. <laughs> Right. Yeah. So, um, so the idea of a hashtag is it categorizes photos and posts. So if I'm saying, um, like I used my lunchbox post, I posted my kids lunch boxes today. Mm -hmm. And so the hashtags I used were food related, but they were also like lunchbox, school lunch, kid food ideas, kid food friendly, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Where if I was going on to Instagram and I'm not like a coach, I'm just a mom. And I'm like, I need ideas for a lunchbox. They might find my post. Oh. So that's kind of the idea behind it. Um, I, I use the hashtag Rana Designs a lot because it's the app that I use a lot. Mm -hmm. And um, an example of this is I showed up in those Rana Designs like crazy because for a while, like it wasn't as popular. So she started spotlighting me on her app. Like it has like a rotating photo every week. And wow. she actually ended up being a challenger like the designer behind the app because she kept seeing all these like, well, she wow. keeps using my dang app and okay. do that. So it's a really good opportunity and really categorizes you into the same like-minded um, group of people. Okay. So how would you know if you're putting something out there that's derogatory? Huh. That happened to me one time. That's what? That's not good. Say how it again. Know, I'm not a good, how do you, how do you research hashtags? I guess is the Like, how do you know if one's negative? Okay, so in the, okay, so if you go in, um, the, there's like a little search bar, um, it's like a magnifying glass and you can click tags. And so, sorry, I'm trying to see, you can okay. see that these are some of the last ones that I've researched right here. Keep it okay. simple, stupid. There, there's 22,000 posts right there. So that's not that many. That's good. My posts will probably stand out. If there's a million, I don't want to use it because it's just going to get lost. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. But keep okay. it simple. That could be anything. Like that could be somebody talking about their homework. So, right. So it's, it's good to sometimes mix it up. Um, on my food pictures, they're healthy. I will hashtag I love cinnamon rolls because I'm going to attract the people like me that oh, also yeah. love cinnamon rolls, but maybe want to try to eat healthy. Okay. I know Jenny, Jenny's who, who is here. She, she wrote to someone, Ashlyn can be trusted because she likes cinnamon rolls. So, <laughs> it works. How do you block people, Ashlyn? Okay. Good question. So when you go like into your notifications where the heart is on Instagram, yeah. it will say like, so like a new follow, they started following you. Um, so I just got one that, okay. So I would let her follow me. Um, if I click on their profile, 
Um, you can see this girl, she doesn't have very many followers or follow um, people she's following. So she's probably a real account. She's private, so I can't see what she's doing, but um, I'm not gonna block her, but you can block right here. There's three little buttons in the top right corner. Uh, and it just says, do you wanna block them? Do you wanna report them? Gotcha. Um, whatever. That's something new I just learned last month, but it's really um, a key part of it. Help yeah. your engagement. When I, when I was being lazy one time, I used the hashtag, like, I love chocolate, because I do love chocolate. And that was a bad hashtag. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> oh, no. Dang it. Very inappropriate hashtag. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, it's, it, it's kind of tricky. And, then and I sometimes, had, I had a like I said, it's, um, I, I didn't say this part of it, but those ones that I saved, the four different categories, um, 30 hashtags for each one is kind of hard to come up with. And so I still have like 10 that are the same in every single one. So it's like scoliosis or um, Utah girl, because I'm in Utah. Um, like what did I say I don't need I even hashtag my name because it's weird Ashlyn um so <laughs> you use some of those same ones with everyone because it will pop up like I get a lot of people who follow me from scoliosis and it, it may have been like a food post that they saw but they know I have scoliosis right okay so, that's good yeah but once you do the research of your hashtags on the front end then like you you're pretty set you store you store them on your phone and you just use them for every post yeah so you do the front end work. And then yeah, and you will, you will find, like, I, after a few months, I will re redo a few of them because, um, so like, beach body coaches will follow each other, and then they're like, I'm going to start using that. And then it becomes, like, a beach body feed, and I don't really want to be a part of that. I want to stand out. So just kind of watch them. Yeah. But I really don't update mine very often, like, every quarter. But if you're not like if you're not willing to reach out to the people who are engaging in your content, then you're missing out on the whole point of developing the relation, like re developing the relationship, to then you know invite them to be part of your challenge. You got to master that forming, even on Instagram. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And so asking those questions, Chalene always says like you have to tell them what to do because people don't know so. Saw that. Well, real quick and then we'll wrap. You were gonna talk a little bit about your journey about um, One Star last year. Can yeah, so um, <laughs> I've gone really slow, especially compared to Joy. <laughs> um, but uh, um, you know our story, which many of you probably don't, but um, I chose to, I had to work my personal life a lot harder. Um, I stayed really consistent. Um, I told Joy I was good at my job. I wasn't great at my job, um, but I was consistent. And so for me, it was reusing a lot of old content. It was um, staying, make, making sure I was taking care of myself, self-care, like working out, drinking my shake, trying to eat healthy, not being perfect, but um, just sharing that along the way. Um, so I was one star for like a year and a half, I think. And so it's not ideal, but um, it got to me to where I am today. And now I'm in three star qualifying and um, hopefully four star in the next week or two. And so it's, and I'm in a whole different mind frame because I didn't like pressure myself to do what I couldn't do. And um, so I guess it's figuring out like making those goals, like heck yes, I still wanted it and I still wanted to grow and do things, but I also had to take care of what was, um, I, I guess, reprioritize things. And so um, we spoke at Super Saturday in January about how to keep going when life throws you a curveball because every one of you are gonna have some sort of curveball come along your way this year. And it may not be a huge thing, but it's gonna be something that like knocks you down for a minute. And it's deciding now to say, well, what am I going to do when that happens? Am I going to keep posting? And I, am I going to be real and tell people where I'm at? Or am I going to kind of isolate and not even reach out to Joy or whatever? It's, it's figuring that out now, I think, is what, it's what I had to do. Yeah. So, so, oh, but steady. 
<laughs> no, but it's been beautiful to see because, yeah, I can tell just the growth that has happened in you personally over the past year. And you never compromise, like the, you never compromise the fundamentals, even though you were going through like so much stuff with your family, you prioritized that and kept that at the forefront of, you know, the minimum of what you would do. Um, and so it's so cool to see all that pay off and your team soar this year. I cannot wait. It's going to be so super fun to see you guys. Yeah. So we're rooting for you. Well, thank you. Yeah, no, it feels, it feels good. And, and honestly, it, like I said, it was deciding that beforehand because life happens to it all of us. For everyone. So. so it's like, how do you keep going? Yeah, with the all right. Yep. Well, we thank Absolutely. you, Ashlyn. You are amazing. And I'm so I'm grateful for the time away from your family. Okay. I know um, normally this is tuck in time. And um, so thank you so much for taking an evening with us. We really appreciate it. And I just love you dearly. So go kill it. Oh, thank you. Love you. <laughs> All right, guys. Yeah. Um, thank you. <laughs> All right. Bye.